Hello, thank you for your interest in our research. My name is Asel, and I'm a master's student at York University, supervised by Dr. Denise Enriquez. And today I'll be presenting some of our research on the effect of frequent cannabis use on the main components of executive functioning. So to start off, here's an outline of my presentation. I will first be giving a short introduction about executive functioning, and then um, briefly describe how the use of cannabis may influence these processes. Then I will uh, discuss the method, uh, results, and finally end up for the summary and future work. So what are executive functions? Well, they are a set of cognitive abilities that allow us to identify goals and select and organize our behaviors or actions with the aim of achieving those goals. It encompasses um, response inhibition and self-control, interference control, which includes selective attention and cognitive inhibition, working memory, and cognitive flexibility. So how does the use of cannabis possibly influence psychoactive functioning? Well, as you know, uh, THC uh, influences brain activity by acting on the endocannabinoid system, which is a neuromodulatory system that is significantly involved in development, synaptic plasticity, and homeostasis. And the system is composed of different types of cannabinoid receptors, and specifically THC acts on uh, cannabinoid type 1 receptors, which are densely found in several uh, areas of the brain including but not limited to the prefrontal cortex, anterior synigulate cortex, hippocampus, basal ganglia, and the cerebellum. And these regions have been found to be associated with executive functioning processes, and so it can be suggested that the use of cannabis may influence these processes and affect behavioral performance. So to investigate the effect of cannabis use, we created an online browser study that included a battery of eight established tasks to assess various aspects of cognitive and motor functioning. For the purposes of this presentation, I have investigated the effect of cannabis use on the following tasks um, shown on the screen that have been uh, suggested to recruit the main components of executive functioning, and I will go into each of these tasks later in the presentation. The study also included a questionnaire that consisted of some demographic questions and also asked participants about their cannabis use patterns. For the purposes of this presentation, I'll only be sharing findings associated with the frequency of cannabis use. However, we also performed secondary analyses on the last occasion of cannabis use, the age of cannabis use onset, the length of cannabis use in years, the reason for cannabis use, and we also investigated whether there were any sex differences in the way that cannabis use affects executive functioning. Moving on to our participants, who were all recruited from the undergraduate research participant pool, I'd like to note that the sample size is deferred for each of our tasks due to technical um, reasons, and um, for that reason, we ended up having different sample sizes, and uh, this will be shown in the legends of all the task figures. However, the number of participants that have completed at least one task presented today is 723, with a mean age of approximately 22 years. I'd also like to note that a greater proportion of our participants identified as female, as our uh, research participant pool is made up of approximately 70% females. And we also uh, included participants who did not report any other recreational drug or opiate use, and who did not have any known neurological conditions. We divided up our participants into three groups. First, we identified non-users of cannabis as those who indicated that they've never used cannabis before, infrequent users as those who use cannabis at least once in the past three months to a few times a month, frequent users as those who use cannabis at least once a week to daily. So going back to our main research question, um, does frequent cannabis use affect the main components of executive functioning? So the first component of executive functioning that um, we investigated was response inhibition. So to assess response inhibition mechanisms, we administered the go-no-go no go task where participants made a response when they were presented a go stimulus and inhibited a response when they were presented a no-go stimulus. And here the no-go stimulus was presented pseudo-randomly in 20% of the trials. On this task, we found that frequent users, infrequent users, and non-users all perform similarly when it comes to their reaction times on HIT and false alarm trials. For those not familiar with signal detection, HIT trials are those where a participant made a response when they were required to do so, and false alarms are trials where participants failed to inhibit their response. We also computed D-prime as a measure of sensitivity or accuracy, where a higher D-prime value indicates greater accuracy. Here, we also found no difference between frequent users, infrequent users, and non-users. And um, we also con conducted follow-up Bayes analyses to determine whether there really is no effect of frequency of use and the results confirmed that frequent cannabis use did not impair motor response inhibition. We also assessed uh, selective visual attention as the second uh, component of executive functioning. And we did this using the serial visual search task where participants were instructed to search for a regular upright T 
through an array of regularly shaped T's. So participants would have pressed X on their keyboard if the target was present and M if the target was absent. And here the array set size varied between 6, 12, and 18 shapes. Before sharing the results for this task, I'd like to note that we are seeing the typical pattern associated with uh, serial visual search tasks, where as the array set size increases, so does the time it takes participants to search for the target and make a response. Also, the time it takes to search for the target tends to be lower when the target is present versus when it is absent. As for our uh, findings with regards to cannabis use, we found no differences in reaction times between the three groups um, over the three array set sizes, both when the target is present and absent. So this finding was again confirmed with follow-up based analyses, which indicated that frequent cannabis use does not lead to impairments in selective visual attention. Next, we assessed visual, uh, visual spatial working memory and visual spatial working memory capacity using the visual spatial and back task. In this task, participants were presented with a three by three square grid where a white square was presented in one location each trial. Participants were required to make a response when the location of the white square appeared in the same location as it did n trials back and to refrain from making a response if it did not appear in the same location as it did n trials back. All participants completed three blocks corresponding to three load sizes, which reflects the number of trials that had to be remembered. When it comes to re reaction times on false alarm hit trials, uh, we found no significant difference between frequent users, infrequent users, and non-users. And we also computed D prime as a measure of sensitivity or accuracy. And again, here, a higher D prime indicates greater accuracy. Before getting into our groups, um, I'd like to note that um, we are seeing a typical pattern that is associated with working memory tasks where accuracy tends to decrease as the load size increases. Here, we did not find a significant difference in performance between frequent users and frequent users and non-users, which indicated the absence of an impairment associated with frequent cannabis use. And again, this was confirmed with follow-up based analyses. To assess cognitive flexibility and set shifting abilities, we administered the trail making test, specifically trails B, which is a widely used and established test. And here, participants completed a computerized version of the pencil and paper test where they were required to use their mouse to connect circles while alternating between letters and numbers as fast as possible. Performance on this task is determined by the total time it takes participants to successfully make all the correct connections, and I refer to this here as completion time. When it comes to uh, the frequency of cannabis use, we found no significant difference in completion time uh, between frequent users, infrequent users, and non-users, which suggests that co cognitive flexibility and set shifting is not impaired in frequent cannabis users. And again, this was confirmed with follow-up based analyses. Overall, our findings indicate that the main components of executive functioning are not impaired in sustained frequent cannabis use. We found that frequent users always perform similarly to infrequent users and non-users. However, although this is not discussed here, we found some evidence of an impairment of acute cannabis use on cognitive flexibility through our analysis of the last occasion of cannabis use. And this is partially a motivator for our future work where we further examine the acute effect of cannabis use on the main components of executive functioning. And um, in this study, participants meet with us over Zoom where they administer their own supply and dose of cannabis, then complete the same battery of tasks while they're under the influence of cannabis. Um, and the goal here is to compare their performance when they are high versus when they are sober. And with this, we aim to fill in as many gaps in the current research on how cannabis use effects and impacts our daily functioning. Thank you for listening to my talk. If you're interested in participating in our research or if you'd like to learn more, please feel free to email me or you can use this QR code on the top left corner to be directed to our um, lab website. Thank you again for listening.